Hello, hello, Jeff Helvin here with the Lori Ballin team and Ballin Brands at your command. Today, I want to show you how we're going to create an opportunity from a contact. Uh, basically, we're ready to put someone under contract or we've got a, a listing appointment or a buyer's agreement. So we want to go ahead and start the process of getting all the proper information into command so that we can submit it to our market center as we move through the stages. So the first thing I've done here is I've pulled up my test contact, that's testing testerson. And what I have here is basically just their general information. So if I had had any interaction, I just created this today, so I don't have any references here, but if I would have had any interaction, all of the history is gonna show up here. And now I'm gonna simply go to opportunities and we're going to create an opportunity. So what we're doing here is it's going to ask you a few details specific to your opportunity. So I'm going to do a buyer in this particular case. So we have the market centers pre-selected. The team I'm on is pre-selected. The opportunity type, we're going to change that to buyer. And the owner is the rainmaker in this case. The client here is testing Testerson. Now I'm going to put in here that we have a co-buyer and that's going to be the spouse and I don't already have the spouse set up as a contact in the system. So if I type in spouse testerson, you'll see it says no options are in there. So it's not letting me select the spouse uh, because I don't have a spouse in there as a co-buyer. So because I don't have the spouse already in there, I do need to add the spouse as someone in the actual contact record or else it doesn't know who to select it to. So in this case, I'm going to actually go back into my contacts and I'm going to go under the testing testers in here. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to add a relationship. So in this case, we're going to say spouse testers in and it'll say that there's no option. So it's, there's not already someone in the system to link it to. So I'm just going to go ahead and click add. So now that person's in there. So when I go back to my original one, if I start to type in spouse testerson, you'll see they now show up. So that's just in case you don't already have that relationship created between the two and they're both going to be part of this transaction process. So the opportunity name here we have is the uh, default here to testerson, so the last name and that they're a buyer. So you can change that if you'd like. Some market centers have some specifics they'd like you to keep there, uh, but otherwise you can use the defaults as fine. Then we have an estimated close date. Now, in some cases, we don't know this yet. Maybe it's a brand new one. Maybe it's um, you know somebody you just started working with. You got a buyer's agreement, but maybe it's three months. Maybe it's six months. So um, the estimated close date does help in the projections of the system. So if you have an idea that maybe in the next 60 days, something like that, you can go ahead and add one in there. Um, and then the time frame, same thing with that. It, this is more just for uh, pipeline stages and reporting. So if you think they're within a certain amount of time, you can do that. Uh, budget, same thing here. If we know that they're, let's say 300,000 and your commission rate would be, let's say 3%, of course that's always negotiable. But uh, so this would be what's being paid to you by the uh, co-op agent on the listing side. And then what opportunity phase are we in? So cultivate, appointment, active. So let's say I didn't already have someone in the system. They just they were just referred to me by a friend. We had lunch together. We're suddenly in an agreement. So we really skipped a couple of these stages for cultivate and appointments and whatnot. So we could just move them straight to active. And are we searching? Are we in negotiations? Are we closed and so forth? So uh, these are different stages that we can select here. All right, and then assignees, this would be myself because technically this lead is owned by the Rainmaker, but I am assigned to this lead to be able to work on it. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Create Opportunity, and you'll see it pulls up the information here, which gives the general information that we just filled out, and then we have these different tabs. So I could go into, let's say, the buyer profile, and if I had different information already selected there, that would be, or uh, specified there, that would be selected. Otherwise, I can go into documents and this is where you'll start to actually see the different documents that the market center is going to need. So I'm going to close this out because I want to go into the big screen here. 
All right, so now instead of just that little pop-up window, I went right to the, the main screen. So when I click on Documents, you'll see over here, we're all set up for what phase of the, uh, of the, of the deal that we're in. So consultation, there are no specific documents that I have to have just for the sake of consultation. When I'm under contract, however, that's when I'm going to see these different files that I need to have as part of my contract. Now, not all of them are required. Some of them are conditionally required. Uh, some of them are only required with certain types of properties. So what we want to look at is we want to look at here. We actually have the status on the left. These all say not uploaded because I haven't started to upload any of those. Then we have which document it is that we're supposed to be referencing here and what type of document it is in case there's any confusion there on where to get those. And then you'll see right underneath it has a little description. So in this case, an addendum to a, a, an RPA or a residential purchase agreement is optional. There's not always going to be an addendum, so that's not required. A buyer brokerage agreement in our particular market is not required. So we don't have to have one of those, but if we do, of course, we want to upload that. A notice of disclosure that is required, commissions instructions that is required. So you'll start to see that each of these kind of shows you your list of what's required and what we're going to upload. Now I can also click on each one to see a sample of the document, or in this case, you know, if this is an actual document itself, uh, we use Transaction Desk as an example, so most of these documents are in there. But if they weren't, if it was maybe a brokerage specific document that wasn't uploaded, we're able to actually pull this and I could even download it and then upload it to whatever signing uh, e-sign program I'm using or obviously have them sign it in person as well. So very useful to, to kind of get in here and really walk you through these steps. So and then when I have the file, I just simply would click add file. I choose it from my desktop and I click assign, which would then just make it attached to this particular file. So when I'm done and I have all of my required files, then I can actually go up here to the submit to market center. So right now, of course, I haven't uploaded anything so that it doesn't let me submit it, but it does allow me to um, upload and add those, see what information is needed and so forth. And then the same will be true under closed. You'll see there are specific uh, forms and documents that are required under the close status. So I would upload those to close and then hit submit. Now, if you do get anything submitted back to you, if the market center rejects anything or your MCA requires anything additional, you will get an alert up here in the bell. So hopefully that gives you a quick little, um, you know, a little insight into opportunities. If you're new to all of this, uh, I feel this is very helpful for me when I got into all of it for the first time being introduced to kind of show that there's a lot of resources here and it's pretty well organized as well. It's just a matter of knowing where to go or how to go through those steps. So if you have any questions or need any help, by all means, reach out to us at team at balanbrands.com. Of course, you can go to Lori's fantastic resource at understandcommand.com and we look forward to helping you more.